Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bunny and in this video I'm going to be doing a time lapse video of one of my favorite fairy tales by the Grimm Brothers. This art piece has been created for the YouTube Artist Collective, which I'm so honored to be a guest for this month's theme. The theme is of course the Grimm Fairy Tales, which is a favorite topic of mine. I really love going into this topic, talking about the topic, and also inspiring or getting some sort of inspiration from the Grimm Fairy Tales. So there's a really, you know, the Grimm Brothers have a close place in my heart for uh, the inspiration that I derive uh, or that I use for my uh, daily art. Now before we get into the specifics of what I am currently drawing in this video and why I'm drawing it, I just want to kind of apologize and kind of give you guys a warning that I am extremely tired. So if I slur my English words, that's probably because it's late at night, I'm recording this late at night, and I'm actually about to head out for a road trip down to Bavaria. Uh, <laughs> uh, quite early in the morning and we're going castle sightseeing and yeah just going to be with family so I'm trying to get this done before that and I had a long day of work so I do apologize if I do sound a little bit uh tired I guess that's the right word but never mind my lack of sleep, let's get to the drawing. So for this theme, it was the Grim Fairy Tales, and actually I I, I just I just didn't really know which fairy tale to draw. Uh, in the past, I have drawn Snow White, I have drawn Little Red Riding Hood, I've drawn other various things. I was even thinking of drawing Hansel and Gretel, uh, but I figured, okay, something, I kind of want to play around with a full body position. I want to play around with floral things because I really like coloring floral things. And I figured that Sleeping Beauty would be a really great fairy tale to practice this on and to basically take for this theme. Now the story of Sleeping Beauty is an interesting one. You guys are probably familiar with the Disney adaptation. However, I just want to kind of get into the historical aspects of this tale because it is quite interesting and I just really like talking about history. Basically, the tale goes as follows. There's a beautiful and young princess who was basically cursed with a sleeping enchantment from an evil and probably really uh, ugly looking witch and <laughs> she was cursed with a sleeping enchantment and at the age of 16 she would eventually prick her finger once she pricks her finger that the curse is basically sort of uh, enabled or activated and she falls into a deep sleep and the only way that she could wake up a hundred years later is to get kissed by a handsome prince go figure now what's really interesting is that the tale of Sleeping Beauty can actually be dated further back than the 1812 adaptation from the Grimm Brothers. It was actually originally written down by the author Charles Perrault from Paris and this was during the time of 1697. Now this Charles guy, similar to the Grimm Brothers, what he did back in the day was actually take these old fairy tales and these folk stories and actually write them down for the very first time and publish them for the first time. So from what I understand, these fairy tales were not original works of art from himself, it was more so taking um, really old folk tales and sort of rewriting them and publishing them. Apart from publishing Sleeping Beauty, which in French was called La Belle au Bois Dormant, The Beauty in the Sleeping Wood, he also ended up publishing The Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, Puss in Boots, and Bluebeard. Now you're probably wondering, hmm, what about the Brothers Grimm? Well, the reason why I'm talking about Charles' work is actually because his version had in fact influenced the German version that was published by the Brothers Grimm in 1812. It's also pretty important to just note that not only did they take inspiration from Charles' work, but they also took inspiration from sort of the, the earliest narrative of this fairy tale, which was composed between 1330 and 1344. Now, in honor of the Grimm brothers, I did name this piece Little Briar Rose, which goes hand in hand with the name that they gave Sleeping Beauty in their 1812 variant of the tale. Now let's get to the actual art process in which I took and also the art supplies that I basically used. 
You guys know that I do do watercolor mixed media and I really enjoy working in this medium. For this portrait, I really wanted to sort of push myself to do a full body figure and also sort of do a background and just incorporate some really deep levels of richness in terms of the colors. I really tried to achieve something and I think that there were a lot of mistakes that I did along the way, but I managed to try to cover them up with some gouache paint, which really comes in handy, especially if you're trying to <laughs> cover up some mistakes. Apart from the gouache paint, I painted primarily with watercolor and I did use a mixture of my Schmincke watercolor paints as well as my St. Petersburg White Knight watercolor paints. On top of that, I also did mix my watercolors a lot with the white Schmincke gouache paint um, and this is, yeah, this was basically a lifesaver for a lot of the things and I also used a lot of the white gouache to add extra detail, for example, the lace on her dress or her pillow or um, the flowers in the background as well. For blending the skin tones as well as the shadows on her dress and in her hair, I did use a lot of the Karen Bash Luminance pencils together with the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And it's basically just working with layers and layering on top of the watercolor and maybe adding more watercolor and then layering again with the Luminance pencils. But together, I really have to say, together with the Luminance pencils and the Faber-Castell Polychromos, they work really seamlessly and I can create a really good smooth creamy blend for the skin tones. Apart from really working with all of these materials and blending them together and layering them together, I also started working with something that's a little bit new. I did use it in one of my last, I think it was in one of my last videos. Um, actually, it was my favorites, my October favorites video. So if you guys haven't checked that out, do check it out. I do talk about this product, which is basically called the Aqua Bronze. Uh, it's sort of like a glittery paint that you mix with water, or I should say it's more of a glittery powder that you mix in with water, and then you can add on top of your paper. And it looks like a beautiful, glimmery, metallic, sort of embellishment it really looks really nice and for this one I did use the copper color which worked really nice because it's sort of a it, it kind of has a pinkish tone to it and I added this sort of bronze or this copper colored um, glittery paint to some designs on her dress and also on her pillow and also in between of the flowers so it really adds another aspect another texture and just looks really pretty when it shines in the light as always, you guys can find all of the links down below my video description of the materials that I used. As a conclusion to this video, I just want to thank the YouTube Artist Collective for allowing me to be a guest for this month's theme. I really, really enjoyed it and it was a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of the themes for uh, 2018. Uh, as a guest or as an unofficial person, I whatever, I don't care. It's just going to be fun regardless. So I hope you guys really like this, these types of videos and I'm looking forward to what the future will bring. On a side note, I just have to mention my live stream. So I haven't been live streaming as of late. I've been super busy at work. Uh, it's sort of a hot phase right now at work and for the next two, three weeks, it's going to be a constantly busy and I really just don't have the energy to live stream after work and on the weekends because I do have to do a lot of uh, other stuff in terms of making paintings and making videos so live streaming really takes a long time. I'm thinking that I will officially start my live streaming schedule in December once again at the very beginning of December so November uh, is going to be kind of an out month for me and then December we're going to kick start it all off once more. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please give it a big thumbs up and check out my Etsy page. This piece will be on sale on my Etsy page. So all the links you can find down below. Also, don't forget to check out my social media links, Facebook and Instagram. I do post on a regular basis my sort of paintings and my updates and some daily drawings. So do check it out for there and I will be eternally grateful. So thanks so much for watching and I wish you guys all a lovely, lovely weekend. Bye.